Excellent! So I am frequently asked the question, what graphics card should I buy? Which is understandable since the GPU is often the most expensive part of a gaming PC build. Even if you've already decided on a specific GPU, such as the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 that I'm using for my example today, there might be five or 10 plus different versions of it from different add-in board partners like Zotac to choose from. So here's how you can narrow down those options to choose the graphics card that's right for you. So let's assume that you've figured out your total PC budget and what GPU you want. Since choosing between AMD and Nvidia is going to be a topic for another video entirely, I'm just going to figure that with about a $400 to $450 budget for the graphics card, the GTX 1070 is a solid choice. I used an MSI GTX 1070 for the monthly build I did in July, and I consider that to be a very well balanced system, link is right up there. It was $1200 total, and the GPU in a gaming system is usually going to be about 25-40% to of the overall budget. The good news is that as long as you're considering a single specific GPU from either AMD or Nvidia, what doesn't matter are the base specs that will not change. All GTX 1070s, whether they're from Zotac or EVGA or ASUS or MSI, use Nvidia's GP104 Pascal GPU beneath the cooler with 1920 CUDA cores, 120 texture units, providing 6.5 teraflops of raw compute performance. You also get 8GB of GDDR5 memory, but that is where the consistency ends. What does matter and what can change significantly from board to board is GPU and memory frequencies, cooling performance, noise generation, size, aesthetics, and those little bonus extras that the manufacturers might throw in from time to time. All these variations matter to some degree, but the nice thing is that if you don't care about one particular category, like aesthetics for example, you can pretty much ignore it and focus on the more important differences. Let's run down each one. Speed or GPU frequency. Raw performance should be number one on this list, but how much can this vary given that we're talking about the same GPU from board to board? Well, with GPUs that have a reference design like the GTX 1070 Founders Edition, we have a starting off point. This is the frequency that Nvidia has decided every single 1070 GPU can run at. And if you want to learn more about reference versus custom card designs, you can check out my video in the card linked in the top right. So the way I look at it is every GPU has a minimum frequency, which for the GTX 1070 is 1,506 megahertz base clock, 1,683 boost clock. Then there is what I call the reasonable overclocking range, which I usually determine by testing myself or reading reviews online. For the GTX 1070, about 2 to 2.1 gigahertz maximum boost is what most people can expect. Now, add-in board manufacturers will tweak their designs in several ways to give the impression that it might be able to overclock better and hit the upper end of that reasonable overclocking range, such as redesigning a custom PCB and increasing the board's available power delivery capabilities, or creating a massive cooler with more heatsink surface area and additional fans. Note how much bigger the Zotac 1070 amp is than the reference version of the GTX 1070, but does this really matter? Well, it can keep your temps down, it, it can also mean that your card runs quieter, but if you're looking for more raw performance, you're gonna have to spend more on a binned GPU. Binning is just sorting, and when an add-in board partner gets a batch of GPUs from Nvidia, it's common practice to test each one first before plopping it onto a graphics card PCB to determine what is known as ASIC quality. Higher ASIC quality means that the GPU can maintain its operating frequency using less voltage, which almost always means that it can run stably at a higher frequency than another otherwise identical GPU with lower ASIC quality. The upshot is that unless you're buying a binned GPU, which are usually flagship products with special names like EVGA Classified or Kingpin or MSI Lightning, you're gonna get the normal GPU leftovers that remain after all the highest ASIC quality chips have been set aside. EVGA even listed variants of the 980 Ti Kingpin last generation by ASIC quality, charging upwards of $1,000 for a card with a base price of $650 for the chips that they know will have superior overclocking performance. In my opinion, you should just ignore these flagship cards since they're mainly there for people looking to break overclocking records and the premium you pay does not scale with the performance gains that you'll get versus a non-binned GPU. Any GPU frequency over those reference base clock numbers mentioned earlier is technically overclocking though, and you should decide if you want to overclock your GPU right up front. Most add-in board manufacturers have software to let you overclock, Zotax is called Firestorm. By simply adding a 200 megahertz positive offset to the GPU clock on this card, I was able to overclock to about a two gigahertz boost clock, and it actually ran at 2050 to 2075 megahertz during testing. This is a good overclock, but also nothing special compared to other GTX 1070s that I've tried, including the lowly Founders Edition. Even with the big cooler, the extra 8-pin power delivery, sexy carbon fiber accents and all, the determining factor for this 1070 amp overclock was the luck of the draw with the GPU's ASIC quality more than anything else. 
All this is to say that with the majority of GTX 1070s or any specific GPU that you're looking at, you're better looking at other factors to decide which one to buy out of the box than just frequency alone. That is, if you're okay to manually overclock. If you don't want to overclock though, and there's nothing wrong with that, not everyone likes to do it, definitely check those default speeds out of the box. 1070 amp here runs at 1,797 boost clock compared to the reference design's 1,683, for example. That's over 100 megahertz manufacturer overclock. That'll get you more performance out of the box and you will never need to load up the manual control software. That's not to say that these large coolers are useless though, and cooling is important, especially over long play sessions. If your GTX 1070 gets hotter than 83 degrees Celsius, it will reduce the operating frequency, which will also reduce performance. So fortunately, this big cooler never allowed my GPU to get above 72 degrees Celsius. Also, that cooling efficiency means that the fans don't need to work as hard. Under max load, the Zotac 1070 amp never had to push the fans beyond 40% speed to keep the temperatures under control, so the card was basically silent, unless I put my ear like right up next to it, and a silent running card is a very desirable selling point. Also, when it's not using any of the power, it doesn't even spin the fans up, so that's nice too. Those are the most practical considerations for choosing a specific third-party graphics card design, but there are other things to take into account as well. With a custom PCB, you might consider water cooling in the future, so custom PCBs need custom water blocks. You may or may not have one available from a manufacturer like EK, so for that reason, you might want to go with a reference-style PCB. Uh, the boards can also be bigger, though, and the cooler size can also increase, so having room in your case is a very important consideration. Having a long GPU can conflict with drive bays, and having a two-slot or even three-slot size cooler can block expansion slots. You might also consider the card's design and aesthetics, especially if your case has a side panel window and you want to get all matchy-matchy and stuff. Colors, or lack thereof, are either the least important thing on your list or the most important, I guess, depending on how much of a visual person you are. The yellow accent stripe on this card's backplate, for example, is a make or break aesthetic choice. It would work perfectly in a yellow accented build, but would stand out horribly in other color schemes. If color coordination is important to you, consider this carefully, as otherwise you might have to resort to modding or painting things to work, which, while fun, can void your warranty. Lighting is also the new rage in GPUs and motherboards now too. There's RGB LEDs on the Zotac logo and the accents on the shroud of the 1070 amp. You can control them with the Firestorm software. Just make sure that your GPU's LEDs will match with your build if they're a static color or double check that they can be disabled or controlled with software. If you're still on the fence in your GPU buying decision, consider these extras. A backplate like the nicely designed wraparound job on the Zotac amp is largely an aesthetic addition, but often considered quite valuable as an upgrade since it is usually very visible in your case. Accessories for GPUs are often pretty minimal, but some packages like the one that came with the Gigabyte GTX 1080 Extreme that I reviewed a few weeks back can provide some compelling add-ons like a high bandwidth SLI bridge and front panel HDMI ports for VR. Free games are common additions to keep an eye out for as well, especially if it's a game that you already planned on purchasing, although those promos tend to come and go. Also, a good warranty can provide some peace of mind. Zotac provides a two-year warranty, which is extendable to three if you register your card. And finally, mail-in rebates can help save on pricing, as long as you remember to mail them in, of course. So what graphics card is right for you? Well, that depends on you, your budget, your build, and your personal taste. But as long as you don't mind the yellow, I think Zotac has built a very nice GTX 1070 in their AMP Edition right here. So check the description down below for a link to this card on Amazon. It's got current pricing if you're interested, or use what you've just learned in this video to make your own choice. There's also a link to the Paul's Hardware store down there where you can buy shirts. While you're at it, hit the like button and get subscribed if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.